If ever I had a video, would you dance in it? Would you dance? Good morning, folks. Um, I'm just about to go into work, but I thought before I did, I might have a little bit of an on-camera therapy session. Um, I met with um the surgical gentleman from my surgical team about my bariatric surgery, um, obviously on video call, uh, last week. Um, and we were talking about sort of the actual surgery, hopefully being in about three or four months, which has made it all feel very real, um, and about where it would be and that kind of thing. And um, whilst we were driving back from a gig, I was talking to uh, my friend Steve, who I'm in the band with, and he was saying, Right, but why do you want this surgery? Why is trying to lose weight through diet and exercise just not an option for you? Why do you want this complete change in your life? He said, will this make you happy? And I think the answer is yes. But it's a lot to think about. I watched uh, my second Barry Education video and it talked about how for at least 12 months after surgery, you should avoid alcohol. It's not a massive deal, but yeah, um, no gin for a, a year. Uh, it talked about how you should avoid caffeine. Now that's a bit of a massive deal because Karen likes her coffee and is weirdly talking in third person for some reason. Um, and I've left my brew over there, so stay there. I'm back. Okay, so, no caffeine. Um, you've got to avoid fatty foods, etc. Well, I've been doing that for six months anyway. You've got to, um, like, you can't drink when you eat because your stomach's only going to be approximately the size of an egg. So you have to wait at least 30 minutes after you've eaten before you drink or at least 30 minutes after you drink before you eat. So essentially, it's a massive change in life. And what Steve was saying to me is, is it worth it? Is it going to make you happy? So... I've been having to think about it and I've been talking to close friends and also to my son Toby and so I think this is what I've come up with. It's not necessarily about the way that I look. I've never been one of these people that like I can't look at myself naked in a mirror etc. Do I get overly excited by it? No. Do I want to be sick? No. I look at myself in the mirror and what I am is what I am. What I want to achieve from this is a normal existence. And when I say normal, if you've never been very overweight, you won't understand. But it's like looking at all the tables in a pub and deciding that you can only sit at this one table because it's the only one where the chairs don't have arms. And if you're overweight, particularly if you've got a big backside, um arms on chairs make sitting down uncomfortable so it's that it's being very aware of not walking down the street eating a mars bar because you know that people are going to be looking at you thinking that you literally live your life with a mars bar in your hand it is being able to go to a theme park and not worry about whether or not i'm going to be able to get on rides it's going into any clothes shop and being able to find clothes that i like that suit me that don't look like a giant tent it's it's that it's i know i've lost jobs because people have met me and um they take the physical appearance and people equate fat with lazy um people equate fat with not taking care of yourself etc um and it depend every case is individual and in some cases that might be true and in some cases it's not but people look at you and they get a certain impression of you when you're fat so i know i've lost jobs I've been in relationships with people who've not wanted me to tell anybody. I've been so many people's little secret because they like me, but they are very aware that the world will see them dating a fat person and laugh at them for it. Uh, one person was called, a, um, they used to call him CC, a chubby chaser, when they found out that he was dating me, um, which is particularly great for the ego. Um, but these are guys who, um, and in some cases girls, who have been absolutely fine with me and how I look but because of their perception of what other people will think 
we've not been able to tell people what I've been told not to tell people that we're in a relationship. Those relationships very quickly ended after that conversation, but it's not the point. Um, it's something that a thin person rarely has to deal with unless they have something else that's a major stigma that people want to hide. My now ex-husband, um, when we were first getting together and he was telling his parents about me, the first thing he was going to tell them about me was what size I was. And I was like, it's not like revealing it. It's not like going, by the way, she has a second head. You know, so it's not a surprise when you meet her. But these are things, that if you've never been really overweight, <laughs> it's just never going to have happened to you. Um, and these are the things that I would like to know what it's like to live without. Um, which is, that's kind of the reason I'm doing it, to be honest. It's not about getting a partner. I've been single for quite a long time now. I am quite happy with who I am. And as a quote that I read on Facebook says, you're going to have to be a fairly amazing person to change that. I'm all right with me. I'm all right with having dinner on my own, going to cinema on my own, or hanging out with my friends. It's not about getting a partner because I'd also worry if I met somebody after I'd lost all the weight, what would happen if something went wrong with the surgery, I had to have a reversal and it all came back on. Because particularly if it was somebody I knew beforehand that hadn't shown any interest until I lost weight. So these are all things that, that go round in my head. And I'd just like for once for those things not to have to go round in my head. I don't want to have to panic when I get on an aeroplane that I'm going to have to get a seatbelt extender and be sort of looked up and down. I don't want to be that person people don't want to sit next to on the bus because you spill out onto the next seat. I'd just like to know what it's like to be, to not have to consider these things. And that's a large part of why I want to do this. Now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 42, I haven't got any dependents at home. I... I'm kind of reclaiming, not reclaiming my life, because that sounds like a slight on Toby, and it's not. I've had a fantastic time bringing Toby up and learning what an awesome human he's going to become. But now I've been a wife, I am still a mother, but I've grown my child to adulthood. So I kind of want to see what life would be like as a normal human, not having to consider the fat of it all. And I think that's why I want to go ahead with the surgery. Um, as most overweight people will attest to, I've tried every diet under the sun. Um, I've got to admit, I have never really tried or stuck to a strict um, exercise regime. Uh, because as I've mentioned in a previous video, I really hate it. Um, I know that post this surgery, I'm going to have to do more um, in terms of that. But I'm intending for that to be walking. Um, I will go and do some walking somewhere with things that are on view that interest me. Um, it's the one thing I've never tried. It's probably the one thing that would work, but shh, don't tell my friend because he is convinced that that's a thing, but he doesn't watch social media, so I'm quite confident he won't watch this. And um, so, yeah, I don't believe that I would be able to get to a normal weight without surgical intervention. Uh, whether it is a metabolic thing, whether it's just the way I'm built. I mean, my entire family's overweight, with the exception of my dad, but everybody I'm blood related to is overweight. So you've got to believe it, that it's some kind of genetic, because we didn't just sit there and eat lard. Yeah, <laughs> we, we ate normal things like normal people do, and we're obviously more prone to putting weight on for whatever medical reason. Um, so I am thinking that I'm still going to go ahead with it. But I also wanted to sort of sort of verbal diarrhea, if you like, just sort of get all my thoughts out on the video. Um, obviously, I'm a very small channel with very few subscribers. But if anybody has any thoughts or comments, positive or negative, with regards to going ahead with the surgery, I'm up for gathering opinion. I'm a researcher. I do it when I go on holiday. I do it. I've done it before the surgery. I've looked into every aspect of the surgery. I've watched programmes, been on um, discussion groups, etc, etc. So I'm up for getting people's opinions. And that's why I've spoken to my best friend, Steve. That's why I've spoken to Toby, who's my son. And I've spoken to like other people in my close friendship group about this. Um, so any opinion that you have either way, I'd be happy for you to pop down in the comments. Or if you know me, come and talk to me about it. Um, particularly if you've got a point of view I've not considered. Anyway, that is my little 
Tuesday morning rant with my brew, which I'm going to miss. Um, but I can live without it. And whether I stay fat, whether I get thin, I'm fairly confident I will still always be a funny kind of grown-up. See you next time. Sunshine, you are my sunshine, let it be.